Good morning. I'm Reverend Mike Biella coming to you from Elm Park United Methodist Church in a still empty sanctuary, but we are all decked out today for the day of Pentecost, and we're excited that you're with us. Hopefully, some of you decided to join us in the red out today and put on something red to remind us of this special celebration of Pentecost. Let's not wait any longer. Let's just turn around and begin as we listen to this morning's prelude. Join me in our call to worship this morning. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who created heaven and earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Hallelujah. God rides in the heavens and sends forth a mighty voice. We are not alone. Hallelujah. How wonderful is God in this holy places, the God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Hallelujah. And all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Lord, send down your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Our opening hymn is In the Midst of New Dimensions.
Join me in the opening prayer. Spirit of the living God, visit us again as on the day of Pentecost. Come, Holy Spirit. With rushing wind that sweeps away all barriers. Come, Holy Spirit. With tongues of fire that set our hearts aflame. Come, Holy Spirit. With speech that unites the babel of our tongues. Come, Holy Spirit. With love that overleaps the boundaries of race and nation. Come, Holy Spirit. With your power from above to make our weakness strong. Come, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We go back to the very story of the day of Pentecost, brought to us through the writing of Luke, as he writes in the book of Acts, the second chapter, these words. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it then that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, <laughs> they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Man of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I'm about to say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel when he said, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon, upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and the signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thank be you. to God. The traditional psalm for this day of Pentecost is Psalm 104. Let's praise God together. Bless 
the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You were clothed with honor and majesty, and cover yourself with light as with garment. You have stretched out the heavens like a tent, and have laid the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot, and ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations, so that it should never be shaken. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place which you appointed for them. You set a bound which they should not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. Praise to the Springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. Above the springs, the birds of the air have their nest, and they sing among the branches. From your lofty place, you water the mountains. With the fruit of your work, the earth is satisfied. Praise to the Lord. How manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and the Leviathan, whom you form to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. My meditation, may my meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, who rules all creation. Our affirmation of faith is one we haven't used for some time, and yet its words are very appropriate for this day and for the world in which we find ourselves living today. It is the creed of the World Methodist Social Affirmation. Will you join with me on the dark colored print? We believe in God, the creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit pres present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We, we believe, believe God, God help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the uplifting of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gift entrusted to us that all may have enough, in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory, Glory be, to, be God to God on high and on earth peace. 
We confess our sins, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, and through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. This morning I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. And as we do so today, we pray for a world that is hurting, a world that is broken, a world that has been severed in many ways by injustice, by fear, by anger, and for reasons that often are about greed and selfishness. I'm going to begin the prayer this morning by reciting the words of that opening hymn again, just portions of it for us to think about and to come before God in prayer. O Lord, in the midst of new dimensions, in the face of so many changing ways, we ask who it is that will lead the pilgrim peoples, wandering in so many separate ways. We see a flood of starving people, warring factions, and despair. We ask who will lift the olive branch, and who will take on the light of care. As we stand the world divided by so many self-seeking schemes, grant that we who are part of a global church and a global village might, invalid, might envision wild, wider dreams. We are both man and woman, all persuasions, old and young, each of us is a gift of your creation, each a love song to be sung. And should the threats of dire predictions cause us to withdraw in pain, may your blazing Phoenix spirit resurrect your church again. Resurrect your church again. Lord, bring your healing power upon the world this morning. Let it begin in each and every one of us as we go forth from worship to again live in the world. We join those who 
a long time ago waited for the coming of your spirit, who shared the words of prayer with you, come, Holy Spirit, come. Come upon your world today. Come with your healing power. We need your help today. We ask all of this, O God, on this day of Pentecost. And we remember the words of Jesus, how he instructed his disciples always and every time to pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the seventh chapter of John's Gospel comes our Gospel lesson this morning in which, well, let me let the words themselves say what it has to say. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. And as the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet, there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The word of God again for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let's share a hymn a familiar hymn, Breathe On Me, Breath of God.
Well, good morning, Church Mouse. How are you today? Well, of course, certainly. It's a fun day. Pentecost is a great day to celebrate. I see you have your red stole on today. Yeah. So I think we have just about everything we need to celebrate Pentecost this morning. What do you think? Well, I know. But our people are celebrating at home. And even our young folks who usually sit right here are home today watching their iPads or on their television sets. And we're happy that they're there. We wish they were here, but we could still have a great time celebrating Pentecost anyway, can't we? What's that? Oh, yes, I know. Sometimes Pastor Mike brings in a cake and we sing happy birthday to the church because that's the other thing Pentecost is. Not only do we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit that gives us strength and courage and the ability to love as Jesus loved, but it's also the birthday of this great gathering of God's people in so many places around the world that we call the church. Yeah, I know. And sometimes there's crumbs left over after we eat the cake. I'm sorry about that. We'll see what we can do to find some crumbs for you after, okay? All right. Kiss it. Oh, I think we could still do that. I think we could still sing happy birthday to the church today. Maybe we could do that. Mr. George, you can't do it now because you're walking down the steps and I never ask you. That would be great if you wouldn't mind. We'll have a nice chorus of happy birthday. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. Oh, that is terrific. Thank you, Mr. George. We appreciate that this morning. And let's just have a quick word of prayer with the kids, okay? All right. Gracious God, we are thankful that you have given us this wonderful church to be a part of. Not only our church here at Elm Park, but everybody's church. Everybody's place of worship where they go and they remember all the great things that you have done for us, oh God. Today especially, on this day of flames of fire and gusts of wind and songs of praise, we know that you are with us and that we'll never be alone again. What a wonderful gift that is, oh God. And so, with all God's children, we give you thanks. And all God's children say, Amen. See you all next week. Thanks for sharing, Church Mouse. Well, I wish you were here this morning. Well, I know you can see the sanctuary on the tablet or a, your phone or the television, whatever you're watching us on this morning. Most of what's happening here in the emptiness of our sanctuary today is what happens every year when the day of Pentecost comes. Everything is pretty much the same, except for you not being here and the rest of our church family that is not gathered in this place this morning. Not to say, however, that the church is not gathered, because wherever we gather, we are the church. It's not about the building, is it? So as you look around this morning, you see a lot of red. You see some great banners with tongues of fire on them and fabric draped like flames. At least in our mind's eye, it looks like fire. 
I got on my red stole, just like church mouse. Don't get to wear this one too much anymore. It used to be that you would wear this partway through the season of Pentecost. But these days, we wear it on Pentecost Sunday, and we wear it at annual conference when pastors are ordained. We've been talking and singing a lot about the Holy Spirit already this morning, and there's more to come. And it was just a year ago when we confirmed one of our largest confirmation classes in, in many years right here on this Sunday, as I said just a year ago. And of course, we've heard the words repeated a couple of times already today, the words that are really a prayer more than anything else. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In Jesus' day, or at least after his death, resurrection, and his ascension. The Jewish Harvest Festival was held on this Pentecost day. It was a day of giving thanks for the initial harvest of the season, and it was a day that remembered the giving of the Torah to Moses, the beginning of a relationship with God's people and God in a covenant. On this day, way back then, people from all over the known world at the time, Jews, practicing Jews, would come to the temple, make their way to the city, first of all, and then come to the temple, bringing gifts to praise Yahweh, the God of Israel. And so Jerusalem was overflowing with people People talking in every language of the day. It must have been quite a cacophony of sounds. Meanwhile, the, the disciples were in a house waiting as Jesus had directed them. He said, go to the city and wait, remember? Perhaps they were waiting in the same upper room where Jesus had come to them after the resurrection. Oddly enough, I think you understand this, they were sheltering in place until what was to happen happened. Hoping that God would keep his promise and send the power Jesus had promised also to them in the form of the Holy Spirit to be with them in the absence of the physical presence of Christ. How hard it must have been to wait. How hard it must have been. Ten days of waiting and hoping since Jesus had told them to do just that. Go to the city and wait. I wonder how many times they prayed, come, Holy Spirit, come. And then all of a sudden, something did happen. How, how do you explain one of those deeply religious, spiritual, emotional moments in our lives when you just know that God is present? How do you tell someone else that you just in some way experienced a holy mystery? How do you explain the feeling, for instance, when a child takes his or her first step, or even a first breath, or to see the beauty of a rainbow after a vicious storm. How do you explain what it feels like to see your child grow and walk across the stage and receive a diploma? How do you explain the feeling when the words of a hymn send shivers down your spine. I'm not sure you can, but something happens. Something internally happens. Luke says for those disciples it went this way. It was as though wind 
The sound of wind was filling the house where they were gathered. A loud and powerful wind blowing through. And they were overwhelmed by the power of God's Spirit and God's power that they felt as though there were tongues of fire dancing above their heads. Somehow everyone in the city knew that something was happening. And as the disciples were talking, everyone heard them and was understanding them, even though the listeners were all owners of different languages. But they could all understand, even though the crowd was confused, they discovered that everyone was hearing what was going on among those disciples in their own native language. Someone yelled out, they're speaking in Hebrew. Someone else said, no, 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 it's Greek. Someone said, oh, no, it's Latin. No, no, it's Aramaic, I tell you, it's Aramaic. And then Peter, who had talked a good game plan before Jesus was crucified, but had failed to confess it when it really mattered, that night in the garden before his death, somehow, even after denying Jesus three times, that same Peter, on that day of Pentecost, was so moved by the power of the Holy Spirit that he was given the courage to preach what would be the first Christian sermon, the first public sharing of the gospel. We call it good news. Someone yelled out from the crowd, man, this is awful. Here we are on the day of Pentecost and these guys are drunk. Listen to them, they're drunk. Peter said, no, we're not drunk. Look, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. We're filled with the presence of God. And don't be surprised, you remember the prophet Joel, your own prophet, prophesied about this generations ago. Joel said that someday you would spill out your Holy Spirit upon all people, not just some, not just those of the covenant of Judaism, but that all people would receive the blessing and the power of the Holy Spirit. What an exciting day that must have been to be there in Jerusalem. How risky it was, too, to proclaim such a thing as God's rule in front of Caesar's military people. But when God's Spirit comes to us, we are set free from the things we fear. Because, you see, well, something just happens. You know, you just know when God is present. And that's what Pentecost is all about that God is here today. God is at home with you today. God is with people everywhere today who call upon God's name. It happened so long ago, but it's our story too. It's the story of the birthday of a whole Christian church that still defines who we are to be today and what it is that we're about to be about today. Pentecost comes upon us as a community of faithful people trying our best to live as Christ would have us live in a world that doesn't really seem to know who Christ is. Pentecost delivers a lightning bolt of energy upon us that says, you are my body, the church. You will do wonderful things in my name. And it will be as though I am alive in you, through you, and my spirit will guide you as you do my work, and I will be with you wherever and whenever you are about my work. Right now, as we are still sheltering at home, I don't know about you, but I prayed the same words, these ancient words, come. Holy Spirit, come. Oh, don't we need that inpouring of God's Spirit right now in our lives? 
Don't we need that powerful presence to give us the courage to see beyond the tragedy of the day, to see the possibilities of a new day? When this pandemic will be behind us and begin to fade. I have to say that I wish I had Peter's courage. I'd love to have Peter's courage right now. Peter's courage that gave him the strength to stand before the nation and give hope to hurting and broken people. I wish I had Peter's courage today to stand before you all. There's so much discouragement. There's so much fear and loss. I wish I had the courage of Peter to explain our responsibility both as a church and as individuals to do what is right. To stand up and to cry out for justice when it's not available for everyone. I wish I had Peter's courage to shout out and condemn racism that many of us wanted to believe was gone for a long time. That it disappeared years ago, but it, it hasn't. The riots in Minneapolis is not just about the death of one man either. It's about a long history of lingering problems of injustice that continues to hang around and seep to the surface when the pressure builds like lava from a volcano. And when it bursts forth, it just comes. On that first Pentecost, God's Spirit wasn't reserved for some people, not for some nations, not for some believers, not for political believers. It was poured out on all people, not to separate people into camps, but to bring them all together into the body of Christ. I wish I had the courage. How sad it is that our national leadership didn't catch the wind of the Spirit that could have brought the world together in the midst of this crisis. A global pandemic. And instead of calling nations together and saying, what can we do to help one another? We blame each other. Our leadership looks back to years ago. Blame everybody else for what is. Here we are facing a common enemy that threatens the entire world. And rather than uniting us, all we hear is blame. The casting of doubt conspiracy theories, the breaking of long-held national ties, the fellowship of allies around the world, and then to even promote violence within our own cities. Come, Holy Spirit, come. As the church, we haven't always spoken out as if the Holy Spirit is giving us the power and the courage either. Sometimes we think in our American proper culture that it's just best to be quiet, to pray, to wait patiently. On that day of Pentecost, there was no more waiting. The Spirit was erupting. And a movement was born. We are the church. We are the living presence of Jesus Christ living in the world today. And if we fail to speak out about injustice or racism or impending nationalism or simply put right from wrong, then shame on us. Shame on us. I don't think I can take much more of listening to the church is closed church isn't closed. The building might be closed, but the church isn't. 
unless we let it close. We are only ever closed when we fail to do what is right, what is just, what is good, or when we believe someone else will care for it. It'll be okay. We're only ever closed when we no longer ask, what would Jesus be doing right now? Gathered in one place or sheltered at home, doesn't matter. We're still the church. And unless we fail to receive the power of the Holy Spirit as it depends upon us this new day, unless we fail to act and receive that power, we might as well be closed. Come, Holy Spirit, come. The setting sun finally came on that day of Pentecost when that day came to a close. But the power of the newly energized church began that very day to move out of a sheltered house into the world that could only prove the power of God's Spirit to touch, excite, and move people into action. I wonder when this day of Pentecost is over, when the sun sets this evening, what will happen in this world because of you, because of me? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, grace and peace be yours. Amen. Our offering is another solo this morning. And we thank Mark for being with us to share his ministry.
Just a word before we sing our final hymn this morning. I've been getting some emails uh, about uh, when the church will open its doors to worship again. And we are going to follow all the recommendations, but particularly those of our bishop, before we decide what to do. I can tell you that the most likely uh, thing that's going to happen is that we wait here in Lackawanna County until we are green. And that can still be a while, but even then, when we open as green, we will need to social distance and wear masks and take all kind of precautions to protect other people as well as ourselves. So keep that in mind. Um, you're hearing lots of stories about when we can open under yellow and we can bring in 25 people and you'll have to register and all this. Stuff. We'll be together when we're together safely again in mass as we can gather in this place. I'll be saying more about that this week as we produce a video that we hope to get done and get out to you very early in the week so that we can get the information and spread it out as far as possible as we know. With all of that in mind, let's share our final hymn this morning, which is Spirit of God.
forth into the world in peace now and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people and love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.